Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for Thanksgiving week, November 20th, 2023. It's that time of week where we all come together to talk about uh, CircuitPython and what we're all up to and learn a little bit about the CircuitPython world. I'm Jeff Jepler and I'm compensated by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. To support uh, the development of CircuitPython, a great way to do that is to buy your electronics at adafruit.com. And of course, if you are international, we've got a list of international resellers at the bottom of that front store page. So check out if you can find it locally, but get Adafruit stuff that makes CircuitPython happen. Uh, this meeting is run in several parts. Next up will be community news, where we take a look back at our weekly email newsletter. Um, after that, we go by the numbers in the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Then it's time for everyone to participate with hug reports and status updates. And finally, if we need it, we have a section called In the Weeds for longer form discussion. If you're watching or listening to this after the fact, in the show notes, you will find a link to the uh, notes document with some timestamps so that you can skip around to the parts that interest you the most. All right, and with that, I am gonna tell you about community news. Uh, this is a weekly newsletter that we publish on adafruitdaily.com and by email. And it comes out Mondays, and I like to just highlight a few of the items in it. There's a lot more um, to give you an idea of what is up. So we had CircuitPython 9.0.0, Alpha 5, and CircuitPython 8.2.8 .8 release. So we've both got the next set of bug fixes out, and we've also got the next experimental version with new features, incompatible changes, and all that stuff. And uh, in the notes document, there is, um, yeah, in the newsletter, there is a link to the Adafruit blog and the release notes. Next up, GitHub has recognized Adafruit's Lemur Freed with the Hardware Hacker Award. Uh, that is the GitHub Awards 2023. And there's a link onto the GitHub blog. Next up, the fun stuff y'all are doing with CircuitPython. First, I picked a project by our own uh, Mark, known as Gamblor, to show animated GIFs on a matrix portal. And there is a new page on the Adafruit Playground all about that. Next project is on X and GitLab by an uh, individual named Brandon Lane, the CircuitPython TouchWheel library. And I'm guessing from this screenshot that maybe it also uh, teaches you about how to create capacitive touchpads in your own PCB design. So that's pretty cool. And there was also a good list of upcoming um, conferences. The one that I chose to spotlight is Pi Ohio 2023, which is a one day streaming conference on Saturday, December 16th. That one is free to attend. There will be a CircuitPython talk as well as three PyScript talks in addition to all the other activities. And uh, if you don't know, PyScript is interesting because one way that you can use PyScript is with uh, MicroPython. So that's why that is particularly highlighted. So this has been a little overview of our weekly newsletter emailed every Monday. The complete archives are at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash circuit python. You'll also find after the fact a link to this issue of the newsletter there in the uh, show notes. We aim to highlight the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. We uh, really need your support to gather these stories uh, that are of interest. So if you have a project, if you know of somebody who's doing something, uh, just anything of interest, uh, you can submit a pull request on GitHub with the changes. You can also tag your tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on X, formerly known as Twitter, or email cpnews at adafruit.com with your scoop. Okay, next up is the state of the CircuitPython libraries and Blinka. We use our bot called Adabot to gather numeric statistics from GitHub over seven days of activity and review that in this section. Um, so I'll start by giving the overall statistics and then we'll break it down by different parts of the project. Overall, we saw 36 pull requests merged by 30 authors, which is a huge number. Um, and some names that are new to me that seem unfamiliar, uh, How to Flow, Danny BD, Rizal Manda, 
Okaro. Um, let's see. Unid. C-K-O-C-Y-I Git. Subsic. And Alex Tremblay. Um, some of you may have contributed before, but those are names I'm less familiar with seeing. Um, so thank you for that. And we had nine reviewers. Um, in addition to the usual people, I want to particularly highlight Bill88T. Thank you uh, for doing some PR reviews and also Anic data. And finally, we had 30 issues closed by 12 people and 14 opened by 13 people. So uh, net, we were able to bring in a lot of good changes to the software and also reduce the number of issues by a small amount. So next, we will zero in on the core, which is the part of CircuitPython that is written in the C language. And Dan is going to let us know all about that. All right, thanks, Jeff. So in the past week or so, we had 30 pull requests merge by 28 authors, and there were five reviewers. That is a lot of pull requests. Some of this is fixing uh, some bugs that came up during the release process or just before the releases but it's an impressive number of pull requests. Um, so we had 25 issues closed by eight people. Oh, there are 18, sorry, there are 18 open pull requests. Some of those are really old, um, and some of them are not so old, but are still in draft status because they're in progress. And then there are a few that are still open, mostly uh, new board requests, I believe, at the moment. So over the week, we had 25 closed issues by eight people and six open by five people, which is a nice decrease in the number of closed issues. There are now 659 open issues, and those are divided up into milestones. There's one issue for the 10.00 release, which is something that is pending that we would do in that release. Uh, three open issues left for 8.2x, 56 open issues for 9.00, two open issues for 9.0xx, and so forth, there are two issues not assigned a milestone, so we have to triage those. So that's it for the core. Thank you, Dan. Next up, Tim will tell us about the libraries. All right, thanks, Jeff. Uh, for this uh, stats here covers the last seven days or so across all of the CircuitPython libraries. Um, these are the library uh, Python layer of code that allows you to interact with various bits of hardware, uh, like drivers to make different sensors and things work, or provide uh, helper functionality just to make stuff uh, easier to code at a higher level. Uh, across all those libraries this week, we had uh, four pull requests merged by four authors. Um, I think this list of names is mostly the usual folks. I'll say thanks again to uh, Retired Wizard, uh, I'm Not James, and uh, to Liz as well, who are uh, newer, but definitely have appeared in these lists before. Um, we had four reviewers for those pull requests, and those uh, do look like mostly our usual reviewer uh, suspects there. Uh, Lady Ada popping in the review list, thanks to her for this week. Um, there were, let's see, the list of merged pull requests. So the, uh, the timeline here, our oldest pull request merged this past week was only 11 days old. The newest one was just one day uh, old, so mostly sticking again with the newer pull requests this week. That's leaving us after uh, the week with 57 open pull requests, the oldest of which is 459 uh, days, and the newest is just one day. Uh, and then uh, over that same seven days, we had four issues closed by four people, uh, with another uh, new eight issues opened by eight people, and that uh, leaves us with 686 open issues total now. Uh, 19 of those are labeled good first issues. You can find those 19 uh, under the uh, good first issues um, filter on circuitpython.org slash contributing. That page will list out all the open PRs and uh, issues. There are some tabs across the top. You can click over to issues and then there's a drop down where you can filter by the tags, including that good first issue tag, which is the one that we assign to issues that we identify as um, being good for folks who are just trying to get started and maybe don't have as much experience with um, programming or Python or CircuitPython um, so far. Uh, so check out those if you are interested in getting involved. Uh, in PyPy stats for the week, we had uh, 115,056 PyPy downloads across those 321 libraries. Uh, the top 10 list is here in the uh, notes doc if you'd like to take a look at it. Um, 
And then the new libraries this week, or uh, the newer updated libraries this week, were uh, AsyncIO, Wii Classic, and the 8569X. Uh, so I think we got updates. I believe all of those are existing libraries. But uh, that is what we've got uh, for libraries this week. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tim. And uh, I think also at that contributing link, you'll find information on getting started if you don't know much about Git and GitHub. And of course, uh, here on Discord in the Help with CircuitPython channel, we would love to help you get up to speed so that you can improve CircuitPython in the ways that are relevant to you and hopefully contribute that back to our core or our libraries. All right, rounding out this section is Blinka, which I will read today. Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, uh, as well as Python running on single board computers. And this week there were two pull requests from one author, How to Flow, and one reviewer, which was Melissa. Uh, she is usually the one spearheading the development of Blinka, but she's off this week. That leaves three open pull requests, all of which have been open for over 150 days. Uh, issues wise, there was one closed issue and no new issues opened, leaving 77 open issues. Uh, the number of PyPI downloads of the main Blinka library over the last week was about 15, about 14. Uh, 1,500, and the number of PyWheels downloads over the last month was 7,500, and the number of supported boards is 126. Okay, next up is the section we like to call Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. Uh, if you're text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read the notes for you when I get to them in the list. And uh, just to reiterate, if you would like to tell us something outside of CircuitPython that you are grateful for in this week uh, of Thanksgiving, uh, we'd really welcome uh, getting to know you a little better as a member of our community. So anyway, I have a group hug for this whole community because y'all are great. I say that almost every week, but it's true. Uh, a hug for Anne. It's always so much fun to look through the newsletter and see all the stuff that people are doing, and I really appreciate the work that you do to gather and collate that. Um, we have a new contributor on GitHub, who I believe is working through their first submission to the core. It's an improvement to SynthIO, and uh, their name is Cooper Dalrymple, and just thank you. You've been awesome to work with and collaborate with so far, and I hope that you'll continue doing more. Uh, to Bill 88T, I really appreciate how you've dived into creating libraries for CircuitPython. You did your first one over the weekend. It looks great. And uh, again, appreciate working with you on that pull request. Um, and finally, uh, in terms of what I'm grateful about, uh, I'm grateful for some friendships that I've deepened over this last year, both online and in person. And with that, I will read notes from a few people who are uh, without microphone. So Anecdata writes, a hug for Dan H for helping me over a conceptual speed bump with async IO. Carter says, a hug for Dan H for quickly helping resolve an issue resulting from SPI flash part swap. And then from C Grover, uh, a hug to Paul Cutler and Todd Bott for the latest Circuit Python show podcast. To the team and community for all the work on version nine. And uh as a lifelong learner, I'm thankful for the openness of the maker community that enthusiastically shares and teaches. And that brings us to Dan. Once you've finished typing your, <laughs> your okay, notes. So, yeah, so thank you, Jeff, for fixing several translation and build issues after you returned from vacation, which were a really technical debt and uh, improved this, the quality of uh, the build and how the translations work. And then in the Thanksgiving theme, I am grateful for the community and for a job where I can work directly with the people who use what I do. And also that part of the job is to help people as opposed to being at the end of a long pipe and not being able to interact with the people who are the clients and the customers. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Next, I have notes from DJ Devon 3 a hug for Deshipu for helping with an error handler workaround for an intermittent minus two GAI error uh, during get requests. One for Anecdata for a make a label function that dramatically cut down on the amount of lines needed for a label heavy TFT project, 
reduced by 94 lines to be exact. Thank you. To L. Pinkin for refining a time calc function, reducing it by six lines. A hug for Paul Cutler for help picking out a PSU for the Raspberry Pi 5, though eventually I was able to find an official Pi 5 power supply on DigiKey. A hug to Ed G. Jr. for turning a complicated issue into a simple one by recommending a ribbon cable. And last, for Fummy Guy for deep dives on Friday and Saturday. I'm starting to understand the use of self in classes. I always learn something new about CircuitPython library coding by watching his streams. Uh, and next, ADCC writes, I'm grateful for the shelter from the storm this project and its community offers. And now it is uh, time for Foamy Guy. All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, hug reports for me uh, this week. Thanks to Scott for feedback on the uh, CIRCUP changes, which I just noticed I mistyped there. Uh, the CIRCUP changes, as well as uh, prompting to do some refactoring uh, with those changes. It's not something I typically take on uh, when I'm left up to my own devices, but I've learned a bunch about CIRCUP and even more broadly Python uh, object-oriented stuff. So it's been a good experience. Um, thanks to uh, Paul Cutler, Hug Report, for the new uh, Circuit Python Show podcasts coming out. Um, thank you to uh, Vladek on GitHub, who uh, submitted many improvements in the mini MQTT library. And uh, a group hug to everybody. And then uh, I would say that I'm thankful for this community, the friendships and other social connections that have arisen uh, out of it for me, as well as the endless amounts of creative inspiration and opportunities for learning and problem solving. So thanks to you all. Thank you, Tim. Next up is Liz. Oh, uh, hug report to Pomi Guy for assistance with Android app suggestions for working with circuit pie drives. Uh, and a group hug, and on the theme of Thanksgiving, um, I'm always thankful to uh, be working at Adafruit. Those don't know before this, I worked in higher ed, specifically at a medical school, and especially um, during COVID, there were some really dark days. So I'm always happy now to be working in a really positive, uh, nice environment with very supportive folks. And uh, yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you. So happy you're here. Uh, next, I have notes from Retired Wizard, who writes that they have a hug, hug report from Maker Melissa for keeping CircuitPython.org updated with all the cool new boards added to CircuitPython, as well as the new Blinka single board computers. And that brings us to I'm Not James. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Uh, yeah, I wanted to give a hug report to Dan uh, and really anyone else that's helped me uh, being really patient with uh, me learning about CircuitPython internals, async IO internals answering a bunch of questions and Dan specifically pointed me at a original PR for UA sync IO, like the, some refactors and it was really incredibly helpful. And I also wanted to give a hug report to maker Melissa for adding the Helltech board pictures and information to CircuitPython.org and of course all the other really cool boards. Thank you. Nice to have you at the meeting. All right. And rounding out the section as it so often happens is Scott. Hello. Uh, first, uh, hug to you, Jeff, for running the meeting for me. I was scheduled this week, but uh, my life's been a bit uh, unpredictable lately, so it's been nice to not have to worry about that. Uh, thanks to Dan for all of the releasing. It's great to get uh, things that I get fixed uh, pushed out, so I really appreciate that. And uh, I'm thankful for uh, being able to spend lots of time with my family, especially my mom, in the last couple of weeks. Um, that's a huge, uh, I'm thankful that Adafruit, uh, supports me in doing that. And also the full circuit Python community. Thank you, Scott. And now we will move on to status updates. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start and then we'll go through the list in the notes document order. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you, what you'll be doing until the next meeting. Uh, if there are any quick tips or tricks that you want to give, please feel free to do that. But if it is at all a long discussion, we'd prefer to move that to in the weeds. And again, in the theme of Thanksgiving, uh, if you feel like it, I would love to hear about a Thanksgiving or other holiday tradition that is important to you. Uh, so yeah, with that, I will get started. And then I'll have some folks to read who are text only. But um, I've been doing a lot of very minor seeming stuff that ends up taking more time than expected. One of those things is uh, what Dan was mentioning with internationalization. Um, it's just, 
you know, you, you make a change and then a little while later a problem pops up and that can be a little bit discouraging, but um, that's just the way it goes. And we'll get all those things worked out, which is great. Uh, besides that, the, the main task I need to work move forward for this week is a web page that serves up images from an OV5640 camera and lets the camera settings be adjusted via the same web page. So, you know, the vision is you'd have a little rectangular picture, probably not too big, um, and then you'd be able to, for instance, set the exposure up or down or turn, on, turn it from black and white to color, those kinds of things, and immediately get feedback on what those various modes work for. Um, and the, I guess I should rewind and say a piece of work that I did last year was, or last last week uh, were some other of these things that we want in the basic library for the the OV5640 camera on the ESP32-S3 microcontroller. Um, and anyway, my favorite thing about Thanksgiving is that uh, my family and friends do it as a potluck because I find it very rewarding to make food for other people. And I'm excited this year I have a new uh, vegetarian protein recipe that I'll be making. And not everybody will eat it because, you know, weird vegetarian food. But uh, I think I think it's a good recipe and I'm excited to be making that. So next up, we have notes from C. Grover. Continued to develop a set of synthio graphic symbols for creating project documentation. The collection builds on patch symbols from patch and tweak, adding synthio objects. Of course, creating the documentation revealed more about Synthio than I previously understood, opening new creative design possibilities. Details in the published but work in progress playground note. Converted the IoT wind chimes code to work on a miniature Cutie Pie ESP32 S2 stack that includes an I2S amplifier and LiPo charger. The smaller package can be more easily hidden inside a garden gnome in my office. We'll update the code and the playground note in a few days. Updated the PCB design for the PCM510XA I2S stereo DAC to hopefully reduce some of the 1.2 MHz boost converter bleed through. Completely inconsequential in practical use, but a nagging design detail. Looking forward to pasting, assembling, and testing later this week. Holiday tradition. Today is the day the Dutch cakes and chocolate letters arrive for sending to family spread across the continent. Yum. All right, then next up is Dan. Okay, as mentioned, I released last week CircuitPython 900 Alpha 5 and also 828. So 900 Alpha 5 includes some fixes from Scott to the new split heap storage allocation. So you fix some, or Scott fixed some bugs that uh, made it difficult to use larger programs and things, it's a lot better now over Alpha.4. And then 828 has a number of smaller fixes, but most importantly, it works on a sort of new production uh, Metro M4 airlift light boards, which had a different flash chip substituted because uh, things run out. Uh, and so uh, we, that, that you'll need that in order to use that board. But we also updated it for a bunch of other boards. So future substitutions will just be, will work automatically. And my main job right now is to just fix issues in A2X and also on the 900 main branch so that we can get 900 final release out whenever we do that. Um, another thing that's come up recently is that people have been trying to use ESP32 S3 BLE as a BLE central, and it doesn't actually seem to have ever worked. Um, uh, I tried a bunch of back versions and it didn't work, and I think that it's just that Scott uh, ended up being stuck on a certain uh, deficiency in Nimble, and um, which we talked about. We may be able to get around later, but that's probably why it's it's not working right now. So it's not clear whether we might work on this right away or just uh, wait. Um, I, one thing that I saw while debugging the BLE issue was I saw some errors on the Linux side when I was copying a bunch of files to an S3 board running a 900 version. So I would want to reproduce that. And if you've seen something like that on 9, but not on 8 or both, if you've seen it on both, you know, feel free to file an issue. And I've done a lot of reviewing of PRs and other things recently. And in the Thanksgiving vein, 
my usual contribution to Thanksgiving dinner we go to is that I make something called a cranberry cake, which is from a recipe my mother got from the Chattanooga Times, probably in the 1950s or 60s, and the, has the exciting headline, batter is poured over cranberries. Okay. All right, save a slice for me. Uh, next up, I have notes from DJ Devin 3 who writes, I spent an hour trying to intentionally make my feather weather script fail by taking down Wi-Fi at different sleep points. After nine hours, it randomly triggered a GAI error, and thanks to Deshapu's error handler he shared, it no longer crashes on that specific request. Four days later, it triggered another GAI error. I missed adding an exception for. Added the exception handler, and it's been perfect since. Now I'm confident feather weather is almost bulletproof. And also, cue jealousy from everyone else here in the room, I got a Raspberry Pi 5 4 gigabytes. I'm using an external 1 terabyte NVMe SSD to USB 3 adapter as the boot drive, which should get about 60 MB per second in theory. Then I found out about an M2 hat using the PCIe bus directly, which should achieve much higher speeds. Looking forward to diving into Blinka when the USB PD power supply arrives. I also have notes from ADCC who writes, continuing RP2 underscore BLEIO work. Got BLE sniffing working with an NRF 52840 dongle. Working through CYW43 driver issues. Rationalizing CYW43 configuration including driver, SDK, and BT stack. Hoping to have something at least partly functional late December or early January. And next up is Tim. Hello. All right. Uh, last week I finished up changing the Learn Guide pages, uh, specifically the code that's not in uh, GitHub, but on the Learn Guide pages themselves for the updates to Display.io API that came along with 9.0. Uh, the other major thing that I got into last week was refactoring in uh, Circup in the PR that adds support for web workflow. We're trying to split up the interaction with the devices, uh, be it web or USB workflows, and we're trying to split that away from the actual command line functions into their own backend classes. That way, the command line functions that Click implements can uh, use either of them without really worrying about it too much. And then ultimately, uh, it will provide a nice way to create a, a new BLE backend uh, and hook up the ability to use that workflow as well inside Circup. So uh, lots of neat stuff on the horizon there. Um, the uh, other uh, little project that I took on over the weekend just for fun was a little scrolling eSports fan sign. It uh, displays a couple copies of the team logo and the player names, and they just scroll indefinitely on a Matrix Portal S3. Uh, and aside from uh, continuing on with the Circup refactoring, the other thing I have my eye on for this upcoming week is to test out uh, a stack of proposed changes in the mini MQTT library. Um, and that's what I've got for now. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Liz. Uh, so I worked on writing up a quick playground note on using a circuit pie drive with an Android device. Uh, and I did a quick video to post up on the Adafruit socials about it. And that went live this morning. Uh, otherwise, I've been working on a few miscellaneous things before I take a few days off for the Thanksgiving holiday this week. And uh, related to Thanksgiving traditions, uh, this year is the first year that my partner and I will be spending the holidays together. So I'm excited to start some new traditions with him this year. Thank you, Liz. Next is I'm Not James. Hi. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I had added and got the Hiltec ESP32 Laura V3 board definition, which I was um, excited about just because I've not done that before and it was kind of learned some new stuff. And then uh, continuing to work on the tasks, getting some changes to how tasks work in async IO, uh, in particular, just some extra helper functions. And so I moved that PR over to the MicroPython side of things, um, which in, in doing so and in talking with them, I found a way to make it work without moving all the error definitions around too, which Dan, you I talked about a little bit. But once the PR gets a bit of a preliminary review back in the MicroPython side, I want to move it, I want to copy that PR more or less back to CircuitPython if it works out that way. I'm, we'll figure that out. Uh, and then I am really hoping to be adding support for some of the other async IO helpers like wait, queue, and timeout over some of my couple days off uh, this next week. So yeah, that's my uh, plan. Thank you. Appreciate your work on that. And last up is Scott. Hi again. 
Whoa. Um, so last week I fixed two major issues introduced in the split PR. One was a pointer math problem that led to pi stacks being a quarter of the size that they were supposed to be. And then the other one was a fix where we weren't allocating uh, CircuitPython heaps on the PS RAM on ESP, uh, which is why people were running out of uh, memory pretty quick on ESP. So thanks to Dan for releasing those fixes. Um, today, I'm getting caught up in email and Discord. I'm mostly out this week, both because of the holidays and just because, uh, as I've been mentioning, my mom is uh, sick. And uh, so we're, we're spending a lot of time with her. Um, and uh, in that vein for Thanksgiving, I think our plan is that my mom will hopefully make it here and stay at our house for a little while. And uh, we'll have a big Thanksgiving dinner uh, here with uh, my kind of immediate family. Um, and I should a uh, late hug report for my mother-in-law for coming out and helping watch Ari as well. Uh, and then today, I think uh, while he's in his nap, I'm going to walk down to the office because my desktop has stopped booting. <laughs> Uh, again, so I'm hoping to f actually like learn about the Linux boot process and figure out what's going on. Uh, I'm going to try to get that going so I can leave that computer on and SSH to it when I need need to. All right. The uh, last section in the weeds doesn't have any topics in it, so I will move ahead to the wrap up. This has been the Circuit Python Weekly Meeting for uh, November twentieth. 2023. Thank you to everybody who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit and is also available on major podcast services. You'll also invariably find a link to it in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. We all think you should visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held on uh, Monday, November 27th, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific time. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord server, which you can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting, including any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. There's also in the notes doc way at the top, a link to a calendar you can add to your favorite calendar app that we keep up to date. And uh, with that, I just wanna say, hope to see y'all next week. Thank you everybody.